when it becomes a culturally accepted practice to willingly engage in romantic behavior with demonic beings, supernatural beings, when that becomes a part of culture in an accepted way, as an accepted practice, like the end is right there. All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Tattoo Preacher Podcast. This is episode number 52. Hope you are all doing awesome today. So in this episode, we're going to be looking at, as we've been looking at the occult like over the last plethora of episodes, we're going to be looking at a real-life occultic event that transpired for the entire world to see. It just happened recently. And so it fits where we've been where we've been going the last number of episodes, but also fits in with so much of what we talk about or what I talk about so much on this podcast since the Genesis 6 event. Cuz Jesus said this. He said as it was and he's speaking of his return. He says as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. This was Jesus' words. As it was, he, he, he signals that when he's talking about his return, he signals out the days of Noah. And so it's important if you haven't yet uh, heard much about the story of the Nephilim in Genesis 6, I encourage you, read it in your Bible, do a deep dive, go back through this podcast, go on, even go on YouTube, and there are literally hundreds, thousands of videos talking about this subject now. It will it will open up the Bible to you in ways you never thought possible. I think it's the skeleton key for unlocking the supernatural worldview of the Bible. It's just... So we're going to kind of get into it a little bit, not a deep dive, but I want to just review it because we have to set the stage for what recently transpired at the VMA Awards. Now, I don't watch any award shows, ceremonies, acting like the Oscars, the Grammys, any kind of award show. I'm, I'm so sick and tired of Hollywood and the whole industry. I just think it's just, it's a cesspool of nonsense. Um, that's just my opinion. But recently I, I saw a clip from one of the events or one of the performances that it, sh it, sh it shocked me. It shocked me. It would like, it stopped me in my track that I was scrolling through. I saw it on X. And so I was just like, wow. That verse that Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. So what happened in Genesis 6, for those of you who do not know, Genesis 6, I'm going to read it. The first four verses, I tell, I'm telling you, if you have never heard this, this, these verses are going to change your life. It says, Genesis 6, 1-4, now it came about when mankind began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful. So the sons of God, key phrase there, saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit will not remain with man forever because he is also flesh. Nevertheless, his days shall be 120 years. And verse 4, the Nephilim, were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of mankind and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old men of renown. So what you have here, the sons of God, some people think it's referring to a, the human line of Seth. So remember, 
even going back further, Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel. Then Adam and Eve have a third son. They named him Seth. It was the godly line of Seth. And so some people will look at this text and say, oh, it's the speaking of these sons of God are speaking of the, the godly line of Seth. Or you'll have other people who will look at that and they'll say, well, it's just talking about, you know, the sons of God are speaking of the kings, kings of Israel. Problem with those viewpoints is it's not in the text. You have to read that into the text. So if you just take the text for what it says, that that phrase sons of God is the Hebrew f- phrase for bena, or bene ha Elohim, sons of God. Every time this phrase is used in the Hebrew Bible, it is speaking of divine beings. When you look in Job chapter 1, Job chapter 2, the same phrase is used, is speaking of divine beings. All throughout the Hebrew Bible, we see this. And it's not just in the Hebrew Bible. When you start looking at extra biblical texts, other pieces of literature that were written alongside the Bible being written, for example, the book of First Enoch, it takes this story and expands upon it further. And so basically all of that to say, when it's talking about Genesis 6, is speaking of divine beings mating with human women, creating a hybrid creature, part divine, part human, called the Nephilim. And when you get, when you understand that and you start reading through the rest of the Bible, for example, the conquest narrative of Joshua, so many people have an issue with Christianity and an issue with the, the Christian God. He's some sadistic, psychopathic killer who just wants to, you know, commit genocide. And, and why does he have to kill, murder, women and children and all this kind of stuff. Well, when you when you cross-reference the people whom God instructed Israel to take out, the giant clans, they were Nephilim clans, Nephilim tribes, abominations. These beings that were never intended for that were that were never intended to be created. And so you had these angels rebel against God. They left their first estate. We see this talked about in Peter. We see it talked about in Jude. That these angels are the ones that are held in Tartarus, held in the abyss, in chains of gloomy darkness. This is what they're talking about. When they cross the bounds that God had established for them, they lived in the unseen realm and they wanted to come to our physical realm. They transgressed that boundary and then procreated with human women, creating an offspring, creating this hybrid creature that was never God's intention to ever exist or be created. And these are the giants. And when we see this, there's so many videos getting posted, like thousands of them now, about the Nephilim, about giants being discovered, giant bones all over North America, South America, all over the world. I mean, it's, 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 it's honestly super fascinating how basically the last 10 years it's just exploded this discussion this talk of of the nephilim and what it means and who they were and all this kind of stuff and so this is what was happening in genesis 6 and these nephilim were there before the flood and this is why god decided i need to wipe out humanity because the gene pool was getting corrupted and that's a whole other subject is it's the seed war. And so the, the goal, what, what the enemy was trying to do was to corrupt the genome of humanity. Because you go back to Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve sinned, and God was pronouncing the judgment on the man, the woman, and the serpent. He said there's going to be a seed war, and coming from the seed of the woman was going to be someone who's going to crush the head of the serpent. And so this institute, this, this, this began the war, spiritual warfare between the enemy, the devil, and his entourage against God and his people. And so they knew that coming from the seed of woman was going to be someone who's going to crush them, crush him. And so the whole plan was to corrupt the genome. And so this is why God's like, man, if I don't do anything, it said Noah and his 
his wife and his sons and the sons' wives were the only ones that were left who hadn't been corrupted yet. And so this is why this is what precipitated the flood. And so when they pass the <clears throat> and then pass the flood, they somehow appear again. That's speculation. There's different theories as to how did they show up again. That's a different subject for a different day. But the point is they did show up after. And then this is leading into uh, the conquest of Joshua, David, and Goliath. Goliath was the Nephilim, the most famous Nephilim. He had four brothers who were all also giants. And you just start digging. And then you start seeing all over North America, South America, giant bones being found. And you start looking into ancient mythologies and other cultures. There's always stories of demigods and giants and all this stuff. It's everywhere. Every civilization. So this is what was happening. And so what does that have to do with the VMA Awards now? Well, this... So if you saw it, it was... I think her name is Sabrina Carpenter. And... She was doing a performance. And then during the performance, out comes an alien. And then during the performance with the alien, then she starts making out with the alien. Making out with it. And creating this vibe of sensuality, this romanticism, this kind of sexual energy between a human and an alien. And I saw that and my mind immediately, immediately went to Genesis 6. And the verse that I've quoted twice already when Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. And so what's interesting to me is now <laughs> aliens, this, this whole subject of aliens, like what are they? A lot of people think either they're fake, it's just made up, hoax, myth. That narrative is becoming less and less more popular, less and less more likely. A lot of people think that they're just demons. And I've done a lot of videos. I did a podcast episode on that. I don't think they're just demons. Because if, side note, if you continually study the Nephilim, I believe that demons are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. So when the giants, the Nephilim, Genesis 6 and beyond, when they die, because they're part human, part divine, it's like their bodies, their their that that their their spirit being is trapped on the earth. And so these are the the beings that Jesus deals with in the gospels, that the disciples, the apostles deal with, and that we're still dealing with today. This is why they want to possess bodies, because they need in order to interact with our terrestrial world, they need to have a host body to feel and to experience and to interact. And so this is why they want to possess bodies. So aliens are not disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. And so I've toyed with the idea of like, man, are they a separate, just another demonic faction in the kingdom of darkness? Are they some other creature? Are they some other, yeah, just being that, we don't know the origin of how they how they came about. And I've also heard a lot of discussion on aliens being fallen angels. And the more and more, as, as time goes on, I'm becoming more and more persuaded that there's, there's a massive connection there between aliens and fallen angels. And so then when I saw what transpired between this singer and the whole making out with an alien. And then you look at Genesis chapter six, and then you look at the sexual nature that transpired in Genesis six and how, you know, it, again, when, when you look at Genesis six, there's, there's two ways to look at that, you know, and, and people debate on both sides whether these women, whether these angels came down and they took the women by force and in a sense made them slaves, forced them to marry. 
and you know in a sense you know yeah force them to have kids if you get what i'm trying to say um I have to be careful with the words that i use because when i put this on youtube everything gets flagged in like one second so i probably already said stuff i've i've probably shouldn't have <laughs> i've said but anyways um so one theory is that that happened or the other theory is that these women were cooperating cooperating with the fallen angels and and wanted to be wed with them you know these angels came down and i mean imagine it's like think of the marvel characters right think of superheroes think of you know these beings coming down looking a lot like humans you know probably very good looking and then they're tall taller more handsome strong and they're walking around maybe these women were giving offering themselves to the fallen angels but regardless of what side you take there point is that there was there was sexuality there that there it, it was a sexual event and then i see on the stage this like not in some random movie low budget film that never made it into the headlines but like front and center for and i don't know how many people watch these award shows anymore but i think more people saw it afterwards through social media than actually witnessed it live on stage but now millions upon millions of people have seen this or she's making out with an alien and if you just kind of massage that a little bit like connection between aliens demonic entities demonic beings fallen angels trying to make it seem cool now to make out with aliens why else would you put that in there when you look at hollywood and you look at all the predictive programming that takes place that's you know it it it's so sinister and disgusting the kind of things that they that they push out to the masses that they put into the minds of kids and young people I mean these VMA awards I think they're geared towards like teenagers. And so it's like you have all of these let's say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds that age range watching this stuff, watching their celebrities, their favorite singers, their favorite musicians and then you see their hero making out with an alien making it look cool. And it's like I just I think Genesis 6 and i just see the a demonic agenda all over that i see the occult all over that i mean the connection between the occult and the nephilim the occult and fallen angels all that is is it's so dense and thick and it's like we could do a thousand podcasts episodes on those connections and going down all the rabbit trails and we've done a bit of that already but it's it's just we haven't even scratched the surface and it's like it's being pushed out there as in the mainstream to the next generation this celebration of human and alien human and divine being human and a demonic entity coming together you know willfully um is is like it's 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 programming and it's like it's what Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be at the coming of the son of man and i don't know like if you go down since if you since the conquest narrative back in the old testament and you fast forward to now how many instances you know have there been between humanity humans and fallen angels or nephilim but it's like recently in recent years there's just been this massive explosion of people talking about it writing books about it uh creating content around it i mean i 
over 10 years ago, it, you, you never heard of this stuff. And all of a sudden now it's everywhere. I mean, it was, it was on Tucker Carlson. He was talking about it. I mean, it's like making mainstream secular media are talking about it. And so it's just like, it's, that's not a coincidence. And when you just take a step back and you look at just the, how the kingdom of darkness works. And now it went from like, aliens were fake made up if you believed in them you were like a weirdo tin foil wearing hat you know you had mental issues to now it's like a well established documented fact that they're real and now it's like now you're having celebrities and people now engaging in like romantic acts with them for the world to see and it's like so it could have been happening behind the scenes for for who knows how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds thousands of years whatever but it's there's something different going on right now there's something there's there's definitely an agenda that's out there there's there's something ramping up it's just not a coincidence and when you just look at the landscape of our world at large and the rise of technology, of AI, of the political world, and you, you just look at everything and it's just like, man, we are, we are getting closer and closer and closer. And people have been saying that for, again, thousands of years. But when you look at all of the pieces that are coming together, and then I saw this, it's just like, human making out with spiritual being it's like what is ha it's 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 happening now and so what's the next logical move from here you go from making it seem normal to have romantic feelings for aliens fallen angels demonic beings whatever you want to use there whatever terminology to now relationship with them, marriage with, I mean, it's just going to get more and more in your face. It's like they're just desensitizing the population and people don't see it. And it's just like, man, it, it like we are seeing end time, end times re, uh, realities taking place right in front of our faces. Like, this is what the Bible prophesied would happen. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, what was happening in the days of Noah? You had the marriages and the sexual unions of divine beings with human women. Like That's what was happening, creating offspring. And I mean, getting into Nephilim hosts and women being used as surrogate mothers for nephilim being like there's so much stuff <laughs> going on that it's like i i 99.999 of the church if they were to hear some of the stuff that's taking place they 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 wouldn't even have a category to even be able to process it and it's just like there's just so much so much more going on in the spiritual world spiritual warfare that the church is just not prepared for and so like, this is why it's like, I do what I do. And I'm like, I, I'm a nobody. I don't have a massive following. I'm not the most educated on this subject, but I just know that it's gotta be talked about and what little part I can contribute to it and just getting these ideas and getting this, this thinking out there is the whole purpose. Um, because there's an agenda. And there's an enemy who wants to take people out and he's doing so. And it's not just involving help making people sin or tempting them just to do bad things or, you know, it, it, it's so much more intense. It's so much more that the battle is so much greater and involves things that are just not on people's radars yet. 
And so it's very hard to fight a battle when you don't even know what it is you're fighting, where there are, there's attacks happening to people that they don't even think are even possible to happen. So how do you, how do you fight that? You can't just vaguely quote scripture. You can't just, you know, vaguely use some formulaic sayings that are Christian. It doesn't work. I mean, I think God says in, in Hosea, you know, people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There's a lack of knowledge in the church when it comes to the unseen realm, when it comes to the spirit world, when it comes to spiritual warfare. There's a lack of knowledge. And that's got to change. And so, yeah, I just, I, I, I saw that. And it, it floored me, man. I can't, like, they're, they're openly romanticizing human-alien relationships, making it seem normal, making it seem attractive. And that, that's, 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 that's Genesis 6. That's Genesis 6. And, and, and when you look at just the whole alien phenomena of abductions, the hundreds of thousands of documented cases of alien abductions and the kind of things that are happening. And now it's it's like there people are getting abducted to have all of these disgusting things happening to them during these abductions. But now you're pushing out, well, let's just take it to the next level. What if we romanticize the relationship? We don't have to abduct them. They will just willingly participate. Like that's that's where we're headed. You're going to see these, it's going to be, part of the whole rainbow alphabet movement, you're going to have alien love, <laughs> love for demonic entities, love for spirit beings. That's going to be a whole other I, I, uh, sexual identity. It's going to happen. And the crazy thing is Jesus predicted it and we see it. Genesis 6. And when the, and 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 because here's the thing when when that becomes a normal thing when it becomes a culturally accepted practice to willingly engage in romantic behavior with demonic beings supernatural beings when that becomes a part of culture in an accepted way as an accepted practice like the end is right there. Genesis 6, it's the flood. Like once the worlds collide, there's a there's a line, there's a point where God's like, okay, no more. It's over. That's what he did in Genesis 6. It reached a point of like, that's enough. It's done. There's eight people left. The whole rest of the world has become corrupt. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be just like that. The point is this. When it becomes culturally accepted, and it's starting, we just, we just saw it. When it becomes culturally accepted and pursued, this romantic, demonic love between a human and a divine being, the, ends, the end is right there. Like destruction's coming. And so this is like, that's what, that's what rocked me. That's what just like made me think, wow, like it's happening right now. Like it's, it's right there. And so as Christians, man, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta get the truth out there, man. Like the end is coming. And I think what's crazy is when you used to think about, you know, because I've, the last 20 plus years in church um hearing all of these you know end times messages of what the world's going to look like what's going to usher in the antichrist and all this kind of stuff and it's like you it's crazy to see that what's actually going to usher it in not just some technology stuff that's a part of it but it's like when boundaries and lines get crossed 
Like that, this wasn't even an option 20 plus years ago in the whole, you know, the turn to the, to the two thousands and how the world was going to end and all this kind of stuff. And it was, everything was about, you know, technology and certain kind of wars between nations. And, and again, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of correlation to all that kind of stuff, but this idea of like human and divine being cohabitation wasn't even on the radar but it's like when you read the text that this is what precipitated the flood and when you look into what jesus said as it was in those days the days of noah so shall it be when i come back we're living in it this is a massive massive part of it and it's just it's it's just beginning right in front of our face so we got to we got to get that word out and let people know, man, the end is coming and don't get sucked into this new demonic agenda. And yeah, so that's my, that's my thoughts. Episode 52. Thanks so much for watching, listening. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Feel free to send this episode to friends, family. Let's just start a discussion. I'd love to know what y'all think. And uh, yeah, have yourself an awesome rest of your day or evening. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Much love. God bless.